Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically filter a SharePoint online list. Now, before we get started, if you find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest content that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now to dynamically filter a SharePoint online list essentially means to filter one list by selecting a value in another list. Now you can see here in the example that I have displayed on the screen, I have two SharePoint lists side by side on a single page. And when I select a value in the department list, you can see that the department contacts list automatically filters to display only those individuals whose department matches the value that I selected in the department list. So that is what it means to dynamically filter a SharePoint list. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start off by quickly walking you through how you can configure the lists before you set up the dynamic filtering. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just get right into showing you how to set up that dynamic filtering. Now let's go ahead and let's check it out. All right, now you can see here that I am currently in the department list. Now this is the list that we are going to use to select the department value that we want to filter the second list on. Now I'm just gonna quickly open up the new item menu and you can see here that my department field or my department column is a free text field. Now I'm showing you this because it doesn't really matter which type of column you use for filtering. You can use a free text field, you can use a choice type column. What really matters is that the value that you are going to be selecting as the filter, it has to match another value exactly in your second column. Now, if I quickly switch over to my department contacts list, so you can see here that in this list, what I've done is I've actually set up two department name columns. And if I open the new item menu, you can see here that the department name can be either free text or the department name can be selected from this choice column. Now, when we actually set up the dynamic filtering, we're going to tell SharePoint which one of these two fields we want to use uh, to match on as part of that dynamic filtering. And again, it doesn't matter the column type or the data type. What really matters is that identical values in both lists are going to be found. That is the value we select in the department list has to appear in this department contacts list exactly. It has to be identical. Otherwise that match won't work and the filter will fail. All right, now I've gone ahead and set up a new SharePoint page and I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on this add new section button here and I am going to select the two column layout. This is going to allow me to append both lists to this page side by side. Next, I'm going to scroll my cursor into this first column and I'm going to hover it at the very top of this section until I see this add a new web part button. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and I'm going to quickly search for list and I'm going to select the list web part. Next, I'm going to select my department list. And you can see here that it's added the department list in this column of the section on the page. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing in the second column. So I'm gonna click on the add a new web part button. And then I'm going to search for list and I'm going to click on the list web part and I'm going to select my department contacts. So now I've added these two lists side by side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the dynamic filter on the list that I want to be filtered. So I want the department contacts list to be filtered when a user selects a value from this department list. So you wanna place your cursor over the list that you want to be filtered and you want to click on this edit web part button and that's going to bring up this menu here. Now you can see here that there's this option that says dynamic filtering. So you wanna go ahead and toggle this on and this is where you're going to actually configure the dynamic filtering settings for this specific list. Now the first thing that we need to do here is actually select the column in the department contacts list to filter on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this drop down, and you can see here that it displays three columns and again, those are the three columns found in this list. So this is what field or what column do you want to 
filter or match on for the purposes of filtering. Now again, I can select either department name or choice, department names text, department name choice is a choice type column. And it doesn't matter again, as long as that matching is going to happen and the values are going to be 100% identical. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select department name, which is the free text type column. And then the next thing that you need to do is select the list or the library containing the filter value. So I'm gonna click on this drop down, and I'm going to select department. Now again, this is only going to display those lists that have been set up on the same page. So if you do have multiple lists on this SharePoint site, they'll only show up here if you've actually added them to this page because that's how dynamic filtering works. Now I'm gonna select the department list and what you're going to see here is that another field has been added that says column containing filter value properties. Now essentially what that means is from that list that we want to select the filter value, which column do we want to actually filter on? Now, if I click in this drop down, this is going to show me a list of the values from my department list. Now, it's also going to show some of the background columns that exist. So you can just disregard these unless you actually need to use them. Now, you can see here that the two columns that are displayed on the list here are department and department icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and select department. And again, that's because I want my user to select the department and then I wanna reduce this department context list to display only those individuals who work in that department. Next, I'm going to click apply. And that is it. That is how you set up your dynamic filtering. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this menu. And then I'm going to republish this page here. And now this page has been published. And if I come down to my department list and I select finance, what we would expect to happen is that the department contacts list is going to be reduced to show me only these two individuals whose department is finance. So I'll go ahead and select finance. And you can see here that the department contacts list has been filtered. And if I uncheck this, then the list will remove the filter and it will show all of the values. Now, again, if I go ahead and select marketing, you can see here that the department contact list filters again. And if I uncheck it, then the list is going to display all values. Now, if you want to change dynamic filtering, what you want to do again is click on the edit page button. You want to place your cursor over the web part that has the filter set up. And then you want to click edit web part. Now you can come down and change any of these dynamic filtering options. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I am going to change the column that we're matching on in the department contacts list from department name to department choice. And again, really the only difference is department name is free text and department name choice is a choice type. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And then I'm going to republish my page. And now when I go ahead and select a value in my department list, you can see here that it matches, it filters the list exactly the same. So again, this is just to demonstrate, it doesn't really matter what data types you're working with, as long as the values that you're matching on or that you're filtering by are exactly the same. And so that's it. In this video, I showed you how you can dynamically filter a SharePoint online list. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Yacobalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.